Olim was talking about how atoms have different shells and subshells and orbitals within those subshells, as we had talked before about. And sometimes the one that I know by heart is the one for sodium. If the atom is sodium, it has 11 protons and 11 electrons, right? And if you do the electron configuration, what is the electron configuration for sodium? Um, Bibi. Sodium is over there. Yeah. Wait, what letter comes first? One, one S, two, two S, two, um, three, three. You skip the P, woman. Skip the what? The P. Two uh, P. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then we have our 11 electrons accounted for, right? That is called, that's the stable configuration, <coughs> that's the ground level configuration. You have, 1s2 is all the way to the center, so we're not going to worry about it. But then you have 2s2, you have in your, in this subshell, you have an s, and you have your P's, one, two, and three. So in this level, you have one S in which you have two electrons. Those one is rotating, <coughs> spinning in one side, <coughs> and the other one is spinning in the other. So you have a sphere, and one electron is going like this, and the other electron is going like that. <coughs> uh, they never spin in the same direction. There's something called Pauli's exclusion principle that prevents <coughs> them from spinning in the same direction. So this is an orbital diagram. This is a Bohr diagram, that's electron configuration, and this is just, you do little lines for every uh, orbital. So for the S orbital, you have two. For the P, I told you that there is Px, Py, and Pz. And each one of those has two, right? You have two going around Px. Px is like that, it's like a dumbbell in the x direction. Py is like a dumbbell in the y direction, and Pz is like a dumbbell in the z direction. And each one of those has two electrons. One is spinning in one side, and the other one is spinning in the other, for all of them. This makes these orbitals really stable. If you only have one electron, then it'll be kind of like going like that, and that's not very stable. So this, when they're all filled, is very stable. These two are filled, the two in S, so the first, this is the second, um, that's the second shell. It has two electrons spinning in S and with two different spins, and then you have the P uh, subshell with three orbitals and it has those electrons. This makes the whole thing very stable. We want eight <coughs> electrons in P and S, between P and S, and that has it. So right now we're going to do the electrons in Py and Pz. Then sodium has also, on the third shell, it has just your S. You have one electron in the S orbital. That's not very stable. Right? That's not very stable. And that is the reason that metals want to get rid of that. Because there's just one electron, it's on the sphere, but it has nothing to spin with it, right? So that makes it really unstable. It wants to get rid of that, of that electron. However, what is happening right now is that we have sodium, and then you put a whole bunch of light into sodium, right? Kind of like when you put a flame, do you remember, I don't know, for some of you who did the flame test with sodium and other metals? If you put sodium with that energy, you add energy to it, what sometimes happens is these electrons end up having too much energy to be in the state they are in. So some of these, and I'm not talking about an electron, I'm talking about a mole of electrons. All of these are moles of electrons. So one mole of these electrons is going to jump over here 
it jumps to a higher energy level. It's got too much energy for its level and it just jumps. And the way sodium jumps, it goes from this one to that one. When it jumps back down, it emits the color yellow. Because it goes unstable, I put it here, I really should have put it here. So the electron jumps to here. It jumps up because it has too much energy. If we put energy into this atom, I'm gonna call it sunlight, but let's call it a flame. You put a flame, so you put energy into the atom. The electrons ended up having too much energy, some of them jump, and all of a sudden the electron configuration is no longer gonna be that. The excited state for sodium, it'll be 1s1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, 3s2. This is an excited state for sodium, but then it has to go back to that because it, it, it just can't hold on. It lets go of some of that energy and the color yellow is emitted. Every element has a distinctive signature of colors that they emit. So not all of, actually not all elements emit color because you have to have the right amount of energy for them to emit color. You can, uh, you have to jump to the exact level and you have to give out that frequency in order to give energy. So, but the elements that do give colors, they have a distinct signature, which we will see later as well. Yes. So it'll want to jump to like a higher level? Yes. Okay. They, because there's less energy in the ones over here, more energy, more energy, more energy. So imagine if you add electrons and you get more energy, then all of a sudden you can stand your side, just go boom and you jump. And when you jump, you become unstable. And then when you jump back down, you give off that energy that you receive the extra. And if that energy has the frequency of the color yellow, then the color yellow will show, right? Um, whatever color.